So I'm gonna tell you what I think What the Health Got Wrong. This is a world, this is a world premiere. This is a world. Hey y'all, welcome to another Food for Thought. So before we jump into today's topic, I'm just gonna give you some updates, some things that have been kind of on my mind, been happening around the vegan YouTube community. Also, uh, just you know, some other things that have been happening around YouTube and things have been happening in my life. Anyway, so first of all, um, I wanna thank uh, Gary the High Fruit Carbo Raider for a little shout out and video that he made, you know, talking about this idea of vegan YouTubers who may have either a positive message or maybe trying to shift the dialogue away from just the you know drama and onto things that have to do with the liberation of animals with getting more people to go vegan with getting just information out there that helps people really understand the world in a way that you know helps them make smarter decisions. And so, uh, you know, why are we um, continuing to focus on those same, you know, names that will, you know, I think I'm gonna say those names a lot less. In fact, I may not say those names anymore. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, so um, thanks to, again, to Gary High Fruit Carburetor for making that video, and I'll leave some links to Gary's channel in the description box below. Philip DeFranco is someone, he's a huge YouTuber, he's got, you know, over five million subscribers or something like that, and I think he won, like, whatever the, like, YouTube award or the, the social media channel award this year. Uh, you know, he's a pretty cool guy whose channel I follow tends to be a little bit, you know, middle of the road, tries, you know, maybe a little too hard not to be offensive, which is where the problem arises. I find that although he may think he's not being offensive because he has such a, you know, moderate sensibility and he has, su he has embraced so much like the dominant way of thinking, dominant ideologies, that there are things that he may think of as ridiculous that if he really gave it a little bit more thought, he might actually be able to see where there might be some logic in some of the things that he criticizes. Well, most recently, he criticized Kid Rock for wanting to run for Senate. I happen to know that Kid Rock lives just not too far from alt space, and I don't know a lot about Kid Rock, but um, it's not, it wouldn't be the first time that an entertainer has decided to kind of shift from one career into politics. It happened with Sonny, Bolo, Sonny Bono. It happened with, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who became the governor of California, right? So it is not unusual for us to see celebrities step into politics and quite successfully. And by mocking the fact that these celebrities are moving into politics. Gary Springer, uh, you know, Al Franken, you know, all these people are folks who, you know, may have been considered a joke when they ran for their office, but then ended up having, you know, kind of long and successful careers in politics. And of course, we have a president now who is mostly, you know, an entertainer, right? You know, Donald Trump. And not to mock Donald Trump, but not taking Donald Trump seriously might be what led to us having a Donald Trump presidency. Now, I don't want to compare Kid Rock to Donald Trump. Kid Rock might be an incredible, you know, have incredible leadership skills, may have, uh, you know, a great sense of care and wanting to support you know, growth in his community. And, you know, again, you know, he's from, he's from Michigan and we might need a little bit more of the kind of Chris Rock shaking it up mentality in Michigan government. I don't know. But Philip DeFranco, before you go making fun of people, why don't you tell, a little, tell us a little bit about um, Kid Rock and why it might make sense to have Kid Rock uh, working for the government or as a senator. Uh, again, uh, Philip DeFranco brings up the fact that this might all be a publicity stunt, and it may just be, but I don't want to just uh, write it off out of hand because it sounds like it would be funny to make fun of Chris, uh, Chris Rock as president. I mean, as senator. So the show is opening, and it's interesting because we had our first uh, company meal yesterday, and it was not vegan. It was not even close to vegan. And I also just found out that during the show, they're going to be serving, uh, you know, an animal product because it's, you know, Shakespeare, and I guess they're trying to capture that, you know, 
whatever, something authentic feel. And so they're going to be basically serving, you know, the, you know, legs of turkeys um, as, as food. And I guess, you know, that's something that people think is funny. And as a vegan, I don't think that's funny. And um, as people who are trying to uplift their community, I think having an understanding of the way that animal products is having adverse effects on the community would lead um, to just a deeper analysis about what we offer to people as something to eat. My brother is on his way to Alt Space right now with his new wife. In fact, they got married last year. I don't know if you guys remember, I sang at their wedding and I actually ended up singing that song. It's, I have a, a video of me singing the song that I sang at their wedding. Anyway, it's a, a, a big deal. But uh, my brother is not vegan. Uh, in fact, he's, I don't want to say he's the opposite of a vegan, but he's not vegan and he doesn't really have a very deep analysis of of the way that food is having uh, adverse effects on our health in a major way. Although I think he looks to me for guidance from time to time. So it will be interesting having him in this space and to be able to talk about the way the space has been successful in getting people to think about veganism. In fact, we're having a, here tomorrow a retreat. In fact, it's a two-day retreat. It'll be on Saturday and Sunday. And the group of people coming are not vegan, but for the time that they are here, um, First of all, the person who is planning the retreat has had to look into creating a vegan menu and has had to discover for themselves vegan recipes that they're going to prepare. So there's going to be like fresh vegan muffins and things like that. And it's just another, um, for me, it demonstrates how the power of having a space that just when you walk through the door, you have to think about what it means to be vegan. Just walking through the door, you have to think about what it means to be vegan. Um, I have so far not had an experience where someone has said, no, I'll use a different space because I don't want to have to go there and be vegan because, you know, it's not like there's a you know, premium on space in Detroit. There's lots of spaces, but people want to be in this space because of the environment that's been created for people. And people seem to embrace the idea that uh, when you come in here, you're going to be vegan. Uh, there's some thinking perhaps about having the cast party for Hamlet here as well. And when it was proposed, I mentioned to, you know, one of the members of the company that, well, it's a vegan space and people will have to be vegan. And, you know, right offhand, and this is someone who is not vegan and I don't know has ever thought about ve being vegan, but said, well, if that's the space, then that's what we're gonna do. It's okay, we're just gonna grab some, you know, beers and things like that. And I thought it was really awesome. People don't get put off by the idea of having to be vegan for a day. This is really interesting, and I don't know if I told you all this story, but back when we were producing the conference, you guys know that, you know, we gave a conference, 300 people were there, it was all vegan, we had a breakfast, lunch, and dinner that was served, and most people didn't say anything about it. Most people appreciated having the opportunity to uh, think about the way animals fit into, you know, systems of oppression. It was a, a you know, the conference was the Pedagogy and Theater of the Oppressed Conference. And so uh, what I did notice is that having a space that is set up with vegan principles in mind brings out some really like interesting true colors in um, people who choose to eat animal products. I was surprised. It didn't happen a lot, but there was once or twice that people actually came up to me and they announced the fact that they were leaving because they needed, you know, as they said, some meat. Um, you know, they said they needed some meat, which, you know, of course we know is not, is not true. Um, but it was very interesting in a world where, you know, vegans get called out for, you know, announcing the fact that they're vegans. Here we had a space where things were flipped and everything was, you know, again, designed around the principles of veganism. And you had people who didn't necessarily embrace those principles, making it very clear to everyone what their principles and preferences were. So I just want to kind of put that out there. Which I guess 
brings me to the last uh, point in this video, which is I want I saw what the health. And I want to say that I was really impressed by the film. I mean, I certainly, I, I really enjoyed uh, Cowspiracy. And, um, uh, you know, you know uh, What the Health is the, the newest film from Kip Anderson. And I'm so sorry, I cannot remember the name of his co producer slash co-writer, but you know, I'll put that information in the um, description box below. Also, I was really, um, Ali Tabrizi was an editor on the film, so congratulations to add Ali Tabrizi for making, you know, to being part of a really great project. And again, I thought the film was really great and I intend to show that film to a lot of people here at Altspace. We'll probably be doing screenings of that and Cowspiracy through the rest of the summer. Um, you know, not official screenings of those two films, but there are things that will, you know, as a lot with the other projects and the other things that we'll be doing in the space, I definitely want to do some screenings of, of those films because I just think they approach uh, reasons for being vegan that can be embraced by people who maybe aren't ready to look at animals as part of the moral community or really to analyze the you know, commodity status of animals yet. But looking at the impacts on the environment and looking at the impacts on health, I think are key. I think one of the things that the film, however, gets wrong, and um, forgive me because this is, you know, I'm being a little clickbaity, but I really do feel this, is there's an assumption that, and this probably comes from, you know, Kip and, and, and those guys being young, and assuming that because they were discovering these things um, or assuming that they're going to be sharing information that the general public doesn't already know. And unfortunately, we already we do already know. I mean, people, you know, do know uh, the connection between the consumption of animal products and health. You know, you hear people constantly saying, well, I don't eat red meat, right? That's one of the first things people want to tell you when they're changing their diet um, to one that's more healthy is that they've cut out, you know, red meat. So people already have a hint that there's something about the consumption of animal products that is not good for them. There may be some misconceptions that somehow eating chicken is healthier or somehow eating, um, you know, fish is healthier. But, you know, we know. We know that, you know, if you eat fish, there's mercury. We know that there are health issues around the consumption of animal products in the same way people understood for a long time that there were issues with smoking, but you still had a large segment of the population continuing to model smoking you still have people who, you know, smoke. Um, especially people, I don't want to say especially, you know, poor people, but especially people who come from communities where um, maybe there isn't the time to have so much reflection and maybe there aren't the options available for, you know, things to do. Um, so you find people, you know, the, the same way like in food deserts, you don't, you have people who don't have the options. They understand that the food that they're eating is not good for them, but you're not going to walk around saying, man, here I have to eat this thing and it's not good for me. You just learn how to, you learn how to enjoy it. You learn how to get some joy out of what you have available to you. So um, I'm someone who lost a family member. In fact, my mom um, died from complications from diabetes and, you know, there was heart disease and there were all kinds of things going on with my mom's health. And she knew, she knew she was a nurse. She knew the links between food and her own health. And yet she chose until you know, I want to say till the day she died, she chose to eat foods that were not good for her. And I think that this links into um, a lot of other things. I think that we understand the negative impacts that our behaviors have on the environment and how we might be shortening our lives. We might be shortening the life of the planet by making some of the choices that we make, but we continue to do something. There is a psychological shift 
that needs to be made. Now, I'm not trying to say that the whole world is crazy, but I think that the whole world has been brainwashed to the point where we can understand how bad things are for us. Unprotected sex, right? There are things that we know could ultimately kill us that we still choose to engage in because on some level, our value for life has been diminished. Our value for our own lives, our value for the lives of our children and for future generations, certainly our value for the lives of the 56 billion land animals that are slaughtered every year and the you know countless tons of sea animals and the impact that these things are having on the world around us, certainly we do not see ourselves being concerned with those things out there when we can't even bother to take into consideration um, the benefit of this particular being <laughs> right here. So I don't know, what do you think? That's it for this video. Like it if you like it, share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto, baby.